All right, uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, is there anything you wish to say before sentence is pronounced? How much time do I got? Well, um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Oh, you mean how much? Oh, so I misunderstood. I've had people give us yeah, we're not different version not of that, that version. Yeah. Um, how much time do you have to talk? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll g give you a reasonable period. I mean, this is one of the major events of your life, so, so you're certainly welcome to uh, speak. I'm not going to say it's unlimited, but uh, you're welcome to. Uh, Tell me what you think. Speak from your heart. I don't want to go into all the details of the case. I got a lot of dispute about what was said, what was portrayed. I think the facts, with a little more scrutiny, tell a much different story than what the jury decided. And I don't think that that, uh, I don't think that things played out fairly. I think that there's some things that are not just from our side. Questions outstanding for both sides. And I don't think the court accomplished what it set out to do in any means if both sides are left with so many questions. And I don't think, uh, without going into the case, I don't think we really got to the heart of the matter. What I can tell you is I didn't kill anybody. What I can tell you is I didn't stalk anybody. And what I can tell you is I didn't dispose of any corpse. It's really weird to be sentenced for or convicted for it and soon to be sentenced for it, but I didn't judge. It kind of feels like there's no turning around on that now. I don't really know how to make a better statement of my opposition, but I disagree. I'm innocent. I don't know what you're going to decide. I don't know what you're all going to weigh. I don't even know how to represent my own character without having my family be able to testify on my behalf. But they do have some things that are relevant. I mean, even in this, even during the trial, there was a gentleman who tried to come up and talk to me. I think there was a comment about how now everything has happened during the trial when he made that attempt. Nobody really know who, knew who he was, and I do know who he is. He's a man who I saved from um, uh, assault in jail. He's actually related to one of the jailers, and my heart went out to him because I know. He appeared inebriated, and I know he struggles. And I know he was coming up here to talk to me because we got along so good. But those tiny little moments throughout somebody's life, nobody accounts for those. But what they do a really good job of is making up all of these things that they want you to believe when they can label you as a monster. I still didn't. It's still weird. I want to be remorseful, and I am for the things that I did wrong. And you're welcome to sense me for everything that I did wrong, just like the judge in South Dakota. The only thing that I disputed in that instance was whether or not I was coming back to Wisconsin with that, which the prosecution has now repeatedly made false statements about on their own assumptions, hoping that everybody in this courtroom, everybody that's watching this, would buy. Oh, yeah, he was bringing something back to Wisconsin. Not true. Was I caught with marijuana in my car? Yeah. Yeah, I was. Should I have? No. I bend the rules there? Broke them. Broke the rules. And when they said, hey, this is a problem, I said, well, I did knowingly, and I'll be held accountable for it. That's it. And if I killed somebody, whatever that situation was, I can tell you in my own heart it wouldn't be intentional. But if I didn't at all, the guy I never met, I don't really know, I don't really know what this is, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, Judge. Uh, not not guilty. I'm innocent. So. Thank you.